Hello Divas, Dudes, and Dolls, I'm Kara Couture, and welcome back to my fast, frantic, and frenetic little review show, Very Slight, where we go over each and every main stage runway look on Drag Race Philippines Season 3. I know, look at me, wearing another pair of glasses so I don't have to do makeup this week. I've already recorded four videos, and I have another one to record after this and two more to record this week. So my skin needs a day off. But I promise, I promise, you have my word, folks. Next week, for the finale, I will be in full, full drag. Not sure what I'll wear because I was going to wear like a finale gown and all of my gowns are at my boyfriend's. But I'll figure something out. We'll make it work. For anybody who has been watching Very Slay over the course of the season, you know how this works. If I think that the looks got the job done, met the brief, but didn't blow me away, we give it an okay. If I loved them, we give it a slay, and if I didn't love it for any reason, we give it a nay. That's all in efforts to find my weekly slay of the day, my favorite look of the episode, which will go head to head up against our current ranked slay of the season, which is Kiana's Per Yeah look from episode three. Whichever look holds that top spot at the end of next week will become the look from the season that I will illustrate. Granted, I'm very behind on those. I know, I say it'll come eventually. I promise it will, especially once this move settles down and is done. I'm gonna be really hitting the ground running and getting a bunch of art turned out. So, so be sure to stick around for that. If you want to see my written reactions to the looks from the Eliminated Queens, as well as the looks from this really fierce fucking performance challenge, let's get that straight right now. Be sure to head over to the Patreon. You can join for free in order to access that. But if you join at a paid tier level, you get to see all the sneak peeks of all of the artwork coming. There's a lot of Marina Summer stuff coming, so get excited about that. It's just taken me forever to figure out what I want to do, how to get it done, and now that I have figured it out, it's a matter of just not having the time to sit and do it. But I promise it's happening. And you can access all of those sneak peeks and previews as to what's coming to the channel and beyond through the paid tiers. Now, this week's runway theme was really simple to go through. It was just a gown eleganza extravaganza moment. So having a fierce fucking gown, which I kind of figured we would get either this week or next week. So. I'm excited that we got it now, especially because there's only five that I have to talk about. So this will be another really fast one. Alrighty, first up, we have Maxi in this lovely little blue butterfly moment. The hair wasn't my favorite, I will say. I thought it was almost a little too large, at least like the bang pieces. For the scale of the gown, it worked. I thought just in general, I would have liked something that was more akin to her hair from the fractal runway, where it was a little more tight to the scalp. I thought it looked really flattering on her. This, I felt like it swallowed her face a little bit. The gown itself is really beautiful. I love the shape and the scale of it. It's kind of plain. Like it's, it's a ball gown with butterflies on it. Great. Other than that, there's really not an idea or a concept or anything to that. It's just a beautiful gown. A beautiful gown, nevertheless. It's a slay for me. But I do wish there would have been like some element to just elevate the concept a little bit further. Next up, we have Zimba Ding, who just barely missed out on making it to the top four and the finale next week. My heart kind of broke for her during that lip sync. But in regards to this gown, I like the skulls. I thought they were like more rigid than they are, but they seemed a little more pliable just the way she moved. I was kind of surprised by that. I like the hair with this. I do kind of see where BJ was coming from, where like, Sometimes she does kind of tread the line a little bit with cultural appropriation. I don't know. I'm not the one to say whether it's appropriative or not, but I think it is something that she should kind of just keep in the back of her mind that she could end up accidentally doing it without realizing it. The gown itself, it's fine. It's a very similar silhouette to Maxie's in white though. I like the top part of Zimba's dress a little bit more than Maxie's. I didn't like the line on the back of this. I thought it didn't really make a whole lot of sense beyond the namesake. And I think had it just been a white lion, it would have been a little more effective. I almost wish she would have gone with the idea of being like a white lion, but making it a gown, having like a huge mane of white hair, and then just like this little, and then having something that had some white fur, or something to really be like, really living up to this lion that she's named herself after, you know? But for me, it's still a slay. Then we have Angel. By golly. This is my favorite look of hers from the whole season. What a look to head into the finale on. The headpiece is great. The scale of everything is great. I love the giant ruffled textures through the skirt. Really, my only problem is that I think it does kind of swallow her up a little bit just because it's such a high waist skirt. It's just like her little face and all of this material 
but at the same time, given the reference point, I think it works. She does kind of look like she belongs on the side of one of those prayer candles. So I was a fan of it. I thought the colors were great. Loved this hair on her. Really successful look. Absolutely a great week for her. And for me, very deserving of the win this episode. It's a slay. Next, we have Kiana, who's giving us a Victor and Rolf fashion reference moment, which I was very excited about because I love this particular show. It's so bonkers. It's so kooky. Having these gowns that are just like upside down, positioned off the body or whatever in a way you wouldn't normally wear a dress. But I thought this was really cool to start off like that and then have the gown flip to reveal this more like punky gown. I love this hair. This is a sculptural hairstyle that I think is really effective because the scale on it is right and it's also an updo. It's not all of this sculptural stuff and then just like a straight wig behind it, which is kind of my pet peeve. And the proportion works for her face. Makeup is gorgeous as always. I love, I think when you compare it even just this look compared to some of the other ones, it does end up reading a little bit plain in terms of scale and silhouette, but the performance of it and the fact that it's basically a gown that starts off upside down that turns into this, I'm fine with that. I think it's really great, really successful. It is a sleigh for me as well. Surprise, surprise. And finally, we have Tita Baby, who's giving us this gorgeous debutante dress in pink, one of my favorite runways from her the entire season. Her photo shoot version of this, where she doesn't have the cards on the dress, is actually better. I, I, for me, it just didn't feel like that was a necessary addition to the gown, but I loved this color. I loved the silhouette. I loved the embellishment work. I loved the hair. I loved the crown. I loved the makeup. I loved each and every bit of it, cards aside. So, and on top of that, she absolutely devoured this lip sync. My God. Whoever she has to go up against in the finale, if it's a SmackDown for the crown situation, should be scared, I think. She's a bit of an underestimated lip sync killer, in my opinion. Especially if she gets the right song. This is a slay. And with that, it's time to pick my favorite look of the week. I loved all five of these gowns because they're all really great. However, there was one that for me was the real star of the episode. And for me, that was for the first time, Angel. So Angel gets our slay of the day for episode nine. We're going to take her look from this week and put it up against Kiana's Perya look. And as much as I love Angel, Kiana takes it for me still. There's a reason it's the thumbnail of the season trailer. Like it is for me the look that really helps define the season aesthetically. One of those looks that for me is also going to go down in history as one of the best looks from Drag Race in 2024, period. It's gonna take something incredible next week from anybody to knock this off that top spot. So only one more opportunity to do it. Otherwise, this is the look that I'm drawing. And as sad as I am for it to end, that means Thailand is starting the week after. So we're going to be jumping right in to a brand new season real, real soon. As much as I would like a little bit of relief. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All those lovely little things. And go out there, y'all. Stay kind, stay queer, and make sure that your day is very slay.